Hi, Darren here. I recently made a online escape room using Google Forms and Google Sites, which is something I like to do quite a lot because it's a great way to test students' knowledge, particularly at the end of a term or at the end of a unit. Um, but it's also great fun as well. So you can actually give them a, an assessment without them realizing it. Um, so what I'm going to do is take you through um, what the escape room looks like and how I created it. So I created it, first of all, in Google Sites. Uh, and this is the front facing version that you can see as an individual. Um, so I've got my, my name and my header here. And then I've got various different sections. I've got an introduction and then stage one with some pictures and some images. And the questions is all embedded as a Google form here. So I've used the embed code option from Google form, embedded it into the actual first page or the, the top of the first page of the website. So these are clues. And then you've got further clues. And these are just images that have been brought in. Uh, and then further clues. Here we've got a, a YouTube video that's been imported. And then a final stage where the students have got to work out basic things. And there are a number of questions here, but the form itself is in three sections. So they will answer these questions, and that will take them on to a second set of questions. And if they answer those correctly, that will take them on to a third set of questions and that final stage, and eventually they should be able to escape. So what I'm gonna do is show you the background. So the first thing is the actual website itself. So I just created this very simply, created myself a bit of a story, and then set it up into sections. Um, I used uh, a chat generator for this and then just downloaded it as an image. Uh, and the website that I used is this one, geekprank.com, and it just enables you to be able to Put in text and it adds it into your screen and then you can have the receive option back and you can use emojis and you could add in images and you can change times and photos and all sorts of things okay then you can just download that as an image screenshot it however you want you can also change the phone setup so if you want to change to a different phone you can go to android phones or iphones uh, you go slightly narrower and wider. So there's lots of options within there. Okay. So we would download that and uh, em upload that into our Google, um, Google site. We've embedded the code, as I said, which we'll look at in a little bit longer. These are just text boxes that have been added and images that have been uploaded. Here, I've just double clicked and included the URL of a YouTube video in there to embed that within it. Uh, again, just uploaded a picture and exactly the same here. So really, really simple. And I've just put a little um, rider at the bottom there just to explain who it's been made by. Okay, so that's the form itself. It's just one page, really simple. You could have multiple pages, but this one I just wanted to be nice and simple so everything is right there in front of you. Okay, and the questions always appear here. Okay, so the first question we've got is to collect the email address because I'm using this one outside of my organization. I could um, have the form automatically collect email addresses, but then people would need a Google sign in, okay? And then the this first code, I'm looking for a four digit code. Then I'm looking for a text code, a numerical code, and a phrase code to be able to move on. And they have to get all of those right before they can move on to the next section. So let's go to the form and see how we set this up, okay? So there's our first question, asking for the email address. The second question asks for a four digit code. And I've used the response validation option to choose a regular expression that matches 2020. And the reason for that, quite simply, the year is 2020. Okay, so a really, really answer, really easy answer. But if they don't put in the right answer, they get this message, error, access denied, okay? On the second one, oh, and I've made it a required question as well. On the tech, second one, there's a text code, which again is a regular expression that matches Darren White, my name, and the error message is access denied. And the reason for that, for those of you that have had a go at the game, is that the evil overlord is Warden Eth, which is an anagram of my name, okay? Some people, if they've played the game, might be kicking themselves at this point. Then I've asked for a numerical code. 
uh, and in this case it's 1232 okay now I could make that a little bit easier to work out but I'm not gonna because I want it to be challenging so I, I could say that I'm not worried about the, the colon okay but again it's a required question using that response validation if I wanted to I could add in there includes oops, includes at some point but I don't want to add that I could have that as a clue if I wanted to depending on the the ability of my students or I could have them have the option to ask for clues while they're doing it and that might be something I might do to give them a poke okay so if we go back up here the, the number code there's an 1139 but there's a quite subtle 1232 in there and there's that correct answer and then down to this last one um, the regular expression matches we can beat this and if they get it wrong it's invalid again that's a regular expression um, I put the clue in there this time spaces are required and if you go back to the top you might just about be able to pick out that the bold letters spell out we can beat this okay so if they get all of those questions right it enables them to continue on to the next session section and then stage two questions appear on the website okay but the first one is a color code and it's asking with um, uppercase letters for the correct code and the correct code brpg if we go back to the escape room have a look at these colors blue red purple green and if you look really closely you can see there's a very faint one in there a faint two and a slightly easier to spot three and four that gives people a bit of a steer okay so blue red sorry blue red purple green brpg all right and then this next question is a worded code okay a worded code that we're looking for and that responds to this particular question here okay so these are just posted here this is weird what's that got to do with anything well this is an iron and this is a lithium battery and this is aluminium foil and then further down here we've got could this poster be significant so if we worked it out correctly, we would find iron, Fe, we'd find lithium, Li, and then we'd find aluminium, Al. Uh, and if we look back at the form, that's exactly what it's looking for. Fe, Li, Al, spelled in upper and lower case, just like the periodic table, okay? And if they don't do that right, it comes across as invalid. Then the next question is about the video. Okay, now if you play the video, the song, uh, Corona, Rhythm of the Night, um, obviously it talks about the rhythm quite a lot. And you can see you found a clue that says, that just says before the bass line. And you've got three options, three, four, or five. And the correct option here is four, um, because rhythm is said four times before the bass line kicks in. Okay, so the students would listen to the song and hopefully pick up on the fact that rhythm said four times. And what we've done here, we've gone to an, gone to section based on answer, okay? So if they give the correct answer, they go to the final stage, and if they give the incorrect answer, they basically go nowhere. It just takes them round in a loop back to the same part, okay? And then afterwards, we continue to the final stage. We need an electric word lock and a day lock. So we come to here. Here's our final stage an electric word lock. Um, and I think in the form, if I'm right, no, I didn't stipulate anything, but I could have said the, the number of letters required. Ah, I did, I thought I put it somewhere. Um, a five, word, five letter code. You'll notice the letters are all in capitals. And just down here is the word earth, which obviously relates to the world, but also to electricity. So that was my correct answer there. And of course, those of us who recognize this photo, the cure, then we might think that if we're looking for a day code, yep, the cure, Friday, I'm in love, um, and that would be our final answer. And then when students respond, they get a message that just says, congratulations, you've done it, okay? And it's as simple as that. Uh, and then you just publish your website, make it available to the students, whether you're within your domain or outside of it, uh, and just sit back and watch them have fun. And then all I do is with my responses, 
I come to responses here to the three dots. Let's do that again. Come to the three dots, and I ask for notifications of a new response because I'll only get a response if someone's successful. And you can see a couple of people managed to crack this one. So well done to Graham and Tony. Okay, so there we go. That's how we run an escape room using Google Sites and Google Forms.